Hey everyone, it's Dr. Charlotte Hodges, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about incisions and what is normal and what isn't. And I'm gonna kind of put this little um, video together with some images, so if you are the faint of heart, beware, and I'll have a little beware because I'll be showing some um, pictures of some incisions. So a very um, common question that I'll get from patients or that my office will get calls about is, I think my incision is infected. And nine times out of 10, it is not infected. Your inf incision is just, it's just inflamed. In my practice, I generally will use staples to bring the skin edges together. And usually within the first week after surgery, I will have you come in and for your one week follow up and I'll get those staples removed. It's not uncommon for patients to develop some redness along each one of the little um, legs of where the staple has been, but by pulling the staples out within a week, um, the, um, the healing process and your risk for scarring actually goes down a lot. Um, do I use um, suture, absorbable suture? Yes, I absolutely have in the past, but I've had just as many people call me with um, irritation from the, um, from the sutures or some patients, if they might be a little bit more prone to a keloid, I do not like to use any of those sutures because um, that can certainly cause an inflammatory reaction deep within the tissue. Also, if I'm using um, suture um, underneath the skin that absorbs, I also use a little liquid band-aid on top called Dermabond. And I've just had a run on patients for the last couple of weeks where when I have had to use sutures for, for whatever reason, um, whenever I've used the Dermabond, they've had an allergic reaction to the Dermabond. So honestly, I just can't win for losing. So for me and my practice, um, just as a general rule, I just like to use surgical staples. Um, so it's not uncommon, like I said, for patients to have a little bit of redness and sometimes even a little bit of drainage from your incision. And I'm gonna show you a lot of pictures that I've gotten from patients where they've been concerned that is this infected or not. The next question that uh, patients have is, what is this drainage, or I've now had my staples come out and some of the skin edges have come apart. All the incisions that um, you get from a laparoscopic procedure are tiny. The largest one I have is that big. And um, that larger one for my sleeve patients is on the right, for my duodenal switch and bypass patients, it's on the left. And I put deep stitches deep inside. So if the skin edges do come apart a little bit, nothing is gonna come tumbling out. I don't want you to think that you're gonna have a great big wound of hissens and like a piece of bowel is gonna come flying out of your belly. That's not gonna happen. It does not happen. Your body heals from the inside out. And so if the skin edges come apart a little bit, the best thing to do is just put a little Band-Aid. Don't put Neosporin, don't do hydrogen peroxide, don't do um, the Mercuricone, um, or when I was a little, I can't even remember what we called it. It was that red stuff that my mom would always put on. You don't need to do any of that. Just soap water, pat them dry. Um, sometimes whenever patients have had um, surgery and we get their sutures out, they can have a little bit of drainage from that incision. And the idea is um, when you have your trocar, and if this is your abdominal wall, here's a trocar. The trocar is moving all around and you can get a little bit of and then I remove the trocar, you can get a little potential space from where that trocar um, had been located. The body's natural tendency, it, when it heals, it just causes an inflammatory reaction. And when you have inflammation, that just causes fluid to come into the space. So patients can develop what's called a seroma. That just means fluid-filled pocket underneath the skin. Because I also put patients on blood thinners, if there's drainage, it generally will look like red Kool-Aid. If somebody's had a little bit of bleeding after surgery, which is not uncommon, you get blood thinners at the time of surgery. Sometimes people might see really dark fluid that's just old blood and it's coming out. It does not mean that anything's infected. And it also does not mean that you have an active bleed. It's gonna be something more of an annoyance and nuisance than, than anything. Typically, if somebody's gonna have a seroma that develops, um, it's usually about a week after surgery. And then they start to see, once we get the um, stitches out or the staples out, they begin to have some, some drainage from that particular incision. And it just seems to like drain and drain and drain. I typically will just tell patients, put a little four by four, like fold it over, almost like a little maxi pad, and kind of put it over that incision. You might have to change it a couple of times a day. Again, it does not mean 
that your incision is infected and we want that drainage to come out. The time whenever I do get concerned that things are infected are if around the area it's very, very tender to touch, it's like beefy red and frank pus is coming out. Not straw colored fluid, but frank pus. So it almost looks like snot for the lack of a better term. That's whenever I get concerned. And so typically we'll give you a little antibiotic. We might have to clean that out a little bit for you as well. But the risk for infection is less than 5% for um for our bariatric patients um and if you're just keeping your your dressings changed every day you're going to be fine again patients don't need to put anything special on those incisions and if somebody wants to use like a scar cream or moderma or something like that i generally recommend that they don't start putting anything like that on top of it until they're about a month after surgery when those incisions are really well healed now if somebody does seem to have a reaction either to adhesive from the band-aids that are used um, or if from dermabond you can kind of flick that adhesive off and then you can use a little um, benadryl cream or hydrocortisone cream kind of like around the incision not on the incision certainly not the steroid or the incision won't heal but you can use it around the incision to help to decrease that inflammatory response but um in just a minute i'm going to show a reel of a lot of incisions that people might think that are um, infected when in fact they are not. And I completely get it. This is your little body. You may have never had one of these incisions before. And I'm sure like before I went into surgery, if I would have seen some of these, I would have been like, oh my gosh. But now even the girls in the office, whenever you guys call, they've now seen them enough um, to know like what's infected and what isn't. Okay. So um, I hope these incisions um, and looking at these will kind of quell some of your fears. By all means, if you are concerned about anything, I want you to call the office. If it's after hours or on the weekend, you just page me directly and that's our office number. Um, and we always are willing to help our patients. We do not want you to be um, worried or concerned. But honestly, for most people, um, your incisions are not infected. They're just a little irritated and they're angry and they're ready to get those staples out. Okay, so I hope that this has helped you guys. Um, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.